I've been a documentary filmmaker for years, always chasing that one story that would break out. When I heard the rumors about the abandoned water park on the outskirts of my friend's hometown, I knew I had to go. Man, this place looks cursed, Eric said as we stood at the rusted gates of the place at 12 in the night. I could see the hesitation in his eyes, but I had already made my mind up. You really believe those old legends? Come on, it's just an old water park. A few kids probably got hurt and made up a few stories. Carl, you don't get it. This place was built on a graveyard. People died here. Lots of them. Drownings, accidents, things that didn't make sense. And it all happened within a year. They had to shut it down. Some of those bodies were never even found. I ignored his warning. If there was nothing, there was nothing. But if there was something, I could get it on film. As we stepped inside, the air felt thick and carried a strange smell. The park was a desolate wasteland forgotten by time. The water slides were covered in rust, their vibrant colors faded to dull, lifeless tones. Weeds had taken over the pathways, and the pools were filled with murky water, more like swamps than places of joy. I pulled out my camera and started filming. This is perfect. People love this kind of creepy shit. But as we walked deeper into the park, we witnessed strange things. It began with the metallic clang of a chain, like someone was pulling it along the concrete. We both stopped. Did you hear that? Yeah, probably just the wind. But we both knew that was a lie. The air was still, not a breath of wind to be felt. We continued walking, and that's when I heard it. Water flowing, like a river rushing past us. But there was no water. The pools were empty, save for the filth that had generated over the years. And just as we were getting spooked, we heard it. Wailing, a woman's wailing in the dead silence of the night. It started as a low moan, barely audible, but it grew louder, more agonized, until it felt like it was coming from all around us. I whipped my camera around, trying to capture it, but there was nothing, just the empty park. We need to keep moving. Eric didn't respond. He was staring straight ahead, his face drained of color. I followed his gaze and felt my stomach drop. There, in the distance, was a figure, a woman, or at least what looked like a woman. She was barely visible, a translucent silhouette, but her eyes, her eyes were dark. We turned and ran instantly, not caring where we were going, just needing to get away. The sound of our footsteps echoed through the park, but they weren't alone. There were other footsteps, heavier, faster, chasing us. My heart pounded in my chest. I felt the terror clawing at my mind, making me want to scream. I turned left, heading towards the wave pool. It was massive, once the pride of the park, now just a pit of dirt and debris. I skidded to a stop at the edge, panting. There was no way out. That's when I saw her again, the apparition. She was closer this time, her face twisted in a grotesque smile. I felt something cold wrap around my ankle, and before I could react, I was pulled forward. I stumbled, falling into the pool, expecting to hit solid ground, but I kept sinking. The dirt and leaves above had been an illusion. Beneath them was water, cold, dark water that dragged me down. I thrashed, trying to find the bottom, but there was nothing, just an endless abyss pulling me under. My lungs burned, the weight of the water pressing in on me from all sides. I tried to scream, but my mouth filled with water. Just as I thought I was done for, someone grabbed my hand. He was strong, pulling me with a force I couldn't fight. I broke through the surface, gasping for air, and was dragged to the edge of the pool. I collapsed on the ground, coughing up water, my entire body shaking. I finally looked back to see Eric standing there. <coughs> Eric, you saved me. But then he turned his neck and saw something in the distance that suddenly scared him. He ran away. I scrambled to my feet and sprinted as well, but Eric had disappeared, so I went for the exit. I could see our van in the distance, and Eric was already inside, huddled in the driver's seat. Eric, move! Eric drove away, his hands trembling on the wheel. What the hell was that? I didn't just see all that. Jesus, why are you wet? Thanks for pulling me out of the pool. 
What pool? The pool where I was drowning. You pulled me out. I didn't pull you out of anything. I ran straight to the van when I saw that ghost. What? Yeah. Then who pulled me out? I felt the blood drain from my face. Who or what saved me? We never found an answer. It was the peak summers. Adriana and I were desperate for a break from the suffocating heat, so we decided to hit up the local water park. It wasn't anything fancy, but it had a few slides and a lazy river, which is all we needed. We just wanted to cool off, click some sizzling pics for the gram, and have martinis. We headed to the changing room and slipped into our swimsuits. I remembered laughing at Adriana struggling with the knot on her bikini top. The changing room was empty, or so we thought. Soon we went out to the pool area, ready to enjoy our day. The sun was blinding, bouncing off the water and creating a shimmering, almost surreal effect. We spent hours letting the cool water wash away the stress of the week. But our carefree day took a dark turn when I reached into my bag for my sunscreen and found an unmarked envelope sitting on top of my towel. My heart skipped a beat. I hadn't noticed it earlier. It wasn't there when I put my things in the locker. Adriana, did you put this in my bag? Adriana looked at the envelope, confusion and concern etched on her face. No, Jen. What is that? I opened the envelope, and my stomach dropped. Inside were photos of us changing in the locker room. The angles were creepy, taken from multiple angles, like someone had been watching us through a hidden camera. I felt sick. What the hell? Panic set in. Adriana's face turned pale, and we both knew we had to report it. We found the guy in charge of the facility, a middle-aged man named Victor. He had this greasy, slick-back look and a cigarette dangling from his lips. You girls having a good time? His tone was condescending. Someone put cameras in the changing rooms. We found these photos in my bag. Victor looked at them, quite astonishingly, and let out a smirk. How do I know you didn't click this to file fake charges against the property? Girls like you love to make a big deal out of nothing. I couldn't believe it. He was brushing us off. This isn't nothing. Someone is stalking us. But Victor wasn't listening. He waved us away, dismissing our concerns like we were annoying flies. We stormed out, furious and terrified. We had no idea who was behind it or what they wanted. That's when the strange thing started happening. My phone started receiving anonymous calls, but no one would speak on the other end just heavy breathing, like whoever it was enjoyed knowing they were scaring me. Then, when I reached the locker, I found my favorite red bra was missing. It had been there before we went to the office to file a complaint, and then Adriana rushed in with tears in her eyes, saying that she was certain that someone was following her. Let's leave. What if they upload our videos on the internet? We need to find the stalker and we need to find him right now. We decided to take matters into our own hands. We couldn't rely on Victor or anyone else to help us. We needed to catch this creep ourselves, so we set a trap. The plan was simple. We'd go back to the water park hoping to lure the creep out. Only this time, we carried our pepper sprays as well, hiding them under our swimsuits. The rush hour was dying down and many people had started to leave. We had left our bags out in the open, deliberately, hoping the stalker couldn't resist snooping through them. Adriana pretended to go to the washroom and hid behind a slide, while I went away and pretended to be busy applying lotion. Within a few minutes, a tall, bulky man passed by our bag and dropped in an envelope. I charged instantly, and by the time Adriana arrived, I was attacking him with pepper spray. My blood ran cold when he turned, and I realized that it was Victor himself. He wept as the spray burned him, and we raised alarm, making others collect there. You bastard! He froze, and for a moment I saw fear flicker in his eyes, but then he recovered, that arrogant smirk returning. Few good men in the crowd punched him and held him down till the cops arrived and cuffed him. You think you've caught me? You girls have no idea what you're messing with. 
but as they took him away, he turned to us, his eyes gleaming with malice. It's too late, you know. Those videos are already online. And now, everyone will see you. The ground seemed to fall out from under me. It was any girl's worst nightmare. Victor had posted the everything that he had secretly captured for the world to see. There was nothing we could do to take it back. As we walked out of the park, I couldn't shake the feeling that someone, somewhere, was still watching. Be safe. The night waters loomed before us, shrouded in an eerie silence that seemed to devour the sounds of the night. The once thriving water park, now abandoned and forsaken, oozed a sense of foreboding that made my skin crawl. I stole a glance at Jake, who was already eyeing me with a mix of skepticism and concern. As my childhood friend and business partner, he was well aware of the infamous mystery that clung to this place. We're really doing this? I asked as we stared at the rusted gates. Jake shrugged, a cocky grin on his face. We're just debunking a ghost story, right? Go ahead, open it. With a trembling hand, I turned the key. The gate creaked open. Maybe it was my imagination, but as we stepped inside, I felt the temperature plunge. The air grew thick with the stench of decay and stagnant water. Without warning, the wind roared to life, swirling through the park with a speed that felt otherworldly, as if driven by invisible hands. Ginny, Jake's voice trembled. It's just the monsoon, don't worry. I could hardly finish my sentence. I thought it was my mind playing some tricks. Inside, the park was eerily deserted. Weeds choked the pathways, and the slides and rides stood as mere skeletal remains. Isn't it where they found her? Jake asked, eyeing the pool. Yes, Lilia Hawthorne, 20 years old, daughter of Vivian Hawthorne, the park's owner. They say she's still here, trying to seek revenge for her tragic end. I recounted the news where the reporter stated how mysteriously Lilia's lifeless body was found floating on the pool one morning. An icy shiver ran down my spine as I gazed at the pool. Once the park's crowning jewel, it now resembled a gaping abyss with its depths cloaked in a thick, grimy haze. Jake knelt at the edge, peering into the murky water. Looks like rust, he muttered, but his voice lacked its usual conviction. Suddenly, a chilling gust of wind swept through, carrying another furious warning. Leave before it's too late. I shrieked and nearly toppled into the pool, my heart racing. Who? Who's there? I called out, my voice cracking. Ginny, bro, what's wrong? Jake's confusion was evident. None of us knew how it happened. The park came alive with a menacing energy. Lights flickered erratically, water began to flow with the disturbing rhythm, and the ground shifted, creating a surreal Milky Way sky above us. What the? Jake whispered, his fear palpable. Before I could respond, the voice returned, louder and filled with rage. Go! The lights stuttered and shadows danced in the corners of my vision. Panic gripped me. I grabbed Jake's arm and pulled him toward the exit. The park resisted. The paths twisted and turned, dragging us deeper into its nightmarish labyrinth. We stumbled upon the wave pool once more, but this time it was different. The water churned violently, and a figure began to emerge from its depths. It was Lilia, or what remained of her. A pale, bloated form with a terrifying, featureless face. Her presence was a heavy, suffocating force that pinned us to the spot. Jake, unable to resist, stepped closer, drawn to the horror like a moth to a flame. It's not real, he whispered, as if trying to convince himself. It can't be real. But then, the figure's head turned towards us, and though she had no eyes, I could feel her gaze, cold and relentless, boring into me. The chanting voice echoed around us, filled with a chilling finality. Ah! Instinct kicked in and I yanked Jake back. The terror drove us to flee. We ran through the park, shadows closing in, paths twisting and looping endlessly. 
behind us, the sound of splashing footsteps grew louder. Just as it felt like we would never escape, Jake stumbled into a door hidden in the shadows. We tumbled inside and slammed it shut, gasping, sweating, trembling. The air inside was thick with dust and the faint hum of machinery. It took us a while to calm down. Then we noticed it. The forgotten control room. It was the night water's heart. Rows of monitors flicked to life, displaying different areas of the park. We stared in shock as we saw what we had been running from. Animatronics, life-sized and eerily lifelike. Designed to scare and thrill, they were controlled by old sensors and timers, meant to create an immersive and terrifying experience. The park had been way ahead of its time. It was all just machines. Quiet high tech. We spent hours in that room, understanding how everything worked. The eerie whispers, the flickering lights, even the figure in the pool. It had all been part of a sophisticated system meant to haunt visitors. The associating story only notched it up. In the following weeks, we decided to reopen the park, embracing its eerie past. The Night Waters was transformed into a new kind of attraction, a place where thrill-seekers could face their fears in a controlled environment. It quickly became a sensation, its dark history and unsettling atmosphere drawing crowds eager for a taste of the macabre. But even as the park buzzed with new life, the memories of that night lingered. Every time I walked those grounds after dark, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still watching, still waiting in the shadows. The machines had been explained, but the lingering sense of dread remained. A reminder that some mysteries, no matter how much light we shed on them, would always hold a touch of darkness.